Have you ever heard of the phrase cause and effect? It's basically when one thing that happens as a result of another thing that caused it to happen. For example, cause. My teacher sprung an unexpected project on us and it's due on Monday. Effect, my weekend is now shot. Cause, I look like a mess today. Effect, I don't have enough confidence to talk to that guy I have a crush on in my trick class. Cause, my mom is in a terrible mood today. Effect, she definitely won't let me go to that concert I've been meaning to ask her about. Cause, I played terrible in the game last night. Effect, my coach pushed me harder in practice today. You get the idea. In life, sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of a cause and effect situation that is not so great. And sometimes the cause of that not so great effect, it's us. Sometimes the effect we have on other people isn't a good one. And if we're honest, we would admit that there's no one else to blame for that except ourselves. In life, sometimes we mess up. We slip up, we make mistakes. We drift away from what we know we're supposed to do and the effect we lose influence on the people we have relationship with. Sometimes this happens in a big way, like something we did becomes the key topic of the gossip circuit at school or on the team or even in small group. Maybe it involved drinking, partying, something sexual, or running with the police or just something that exposed our mistakes to a wider group of people. Whatever we did was the cause and the effect is a combination of shame, embarrassment, and potential loneliness. Sometimes this happens in a small way over time. Like we said last week, having a big effect starts with a small step. In the same way, having a negative effect can often start with a small step or a small series of steps. How we treat people can increase or decrease the effect we have on the lives of others. Over time, if those interactions are negative, people could stop trusting us or stop wanting us to be around. As a result, we can lose a positive effect slowly over time. Before we even realize it, our relationships have changed and we end up feeling like we can't ever get back to what we lost. Sometimes recognizing the effect we have on others is easy, and other times we're not so sure. If you're not sure if you've lost the positive effect on relationships around you, think about how you answer these questions. Are your younger siblings excited to see you or do they dread when you come home? Are the majority of the interactions with your parents negative or positive? Do the people on your team not listen to you because of the way you speak to them? Do your friends trust you with secrets or do they keep things to themselves because you've shared too many things with other people? Are there relationships you could be influencing or leveraging for good, but you can't because of the choices you've made in the past? Do the people in your small group feel like you're listening or judging them? Regardless of how we lose it, when we realize we've lost our positive effect, it can feel overwhelming to try and get it back. Your big and small actions may have cost you your influence. That was your cause and effect. And now you're probably feeling like you're stuck. This is who you are from this point forward. Maybe your past feels like it now defines you and you fear that you won't be able to ever establish a positive effect again. If that's you, you're not the first to feel this way. The Bible is full of people who use their influence selfishly and end up hurting others as a result. At the same time, there were also people who used their limited influence to save thousands of people. In fact, some people who seem to have very little impact on others end up being some of the most influential people in the Bible who we are still talking about today. This week, we're going to look back at a lady who was cast aside in her culture because of the choices she made. Her encounter with Jesus was recorded by Luke, a physician who sought to record some of the things that happened while Jesus was on the earth. This particular account begins with a dinner invitation. Let's check this out. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. For context, the Pharisees were Jewish leaders who were dedicated to following Jewish religious law. They pride themselves on being pure and following the rules, and because of that, they were confident they had a positive effect on others. They were so confident, in fact, that they looked down on others who seemed to have a negative effect. With that in mind, here's what happened next. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. Foot washing was common, but imagine spending all day walking on a dirt road in sandals. 
everyone's feet would be nasty. So it wasn't unusual to wash your feet when you came into someone's house. What was different about this was that this woman wasn't using water, but an expensive jar of perfume. This was more than a household custom. It was like an act of worship, and the Pharisee had thoughts about it. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. The thing is, the Pharisee had Jesus all wrong. He thought that Jesus would back away from being touched by a sinful woman, when in reality, this was exactly the kind of people Jesus was drawn to, and the kind of people drawn to Jesus. He preferred it that way. People with no influence were drawn to Jesus. People who were sinners were drawn to Jesus. People who had a negative effect on others were drawn to Jesus. This woman knew that she was a sinner and that people saw her as having a negative effect on others. And that's what drove her straight to his feet. Her appreciation for Jesus was fueled by her own inadequacy. She didn't hide from Jesus because she didn't measure up. Instead, she got close to him and worshiped him because she knew even if the Pharisees did it, that her past, the negative effect that she had on people, didn't have to be her future. She knew a different future was possible with Jesus. Then Jesus tells a story and goes on. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Simon looked at this woman and saw one thing, but when Jesus looked at her, he saw something completely different. He saw potential and purpose and a positive effect for her future. Up until this point, the cause and effect of this woman's life looked like this. Cause, she was a sinner. Effect, people looked down on her and wrote her off. But this was the cause and effect of Jesus' response to her. Cause, Jesus loved her. Effect, Jesus validated and forgave her. Jesus did not reject her or cast her aside. He knew the choices she made and he forgave her. And he offers the same to us. No matter what you've done or how bad of a person you think you are or how people may see you because of what you've done, you are loved by Jesus. You are free to love him back. You don't need to feel shame or embarrassment or fear. You can choose a new future that he can give you. You don't have to be the sum of the bad choices or the small decisions that have cost him influence. In fact, what's incredible about Jesus' encounter with this woman is that she gained back her influence. She had a positive effect in her encounter with Jesus. She was an example of what people should do in this particular situation. Because of her decision to take a step toward Jesus, her story was redeemed through Jesus and continues to be told thousands of years later. Think of it this way. Because of Jesus, we can change the effect we have on others. Just like the woman in the story, our mistakes don't have to erase the potential for positive effect. Jesus gives us grace and forgiveness to help us take a different step going forward. Every day is a new opportunity to take a step closer to Jesus. Maybe you're sitting here today feeling like you can relate to the story because you've struggled to have a positive effect on those around you. Or maybe you feel like you've made decisions that have caused you to lose your influence and impact on others. Either way, here are a few steps you can take to change direction. First, reflect. Ask yourself, what small steps or big decisions are leading me to have a negative effect on others? Is it in how you speak to others? Are you too harsh or sarcastic in your responses? Maybe you're making choices that aren't healthy for your physical, emotional, or mental health. Maybe you're getting drunk, smoking weed, or making impulsive decisions that are borderline reckless. Maybe you're lying to the people closest to you, or you're pretending to be someone you're not. Whatever the case may be, Take some time to think honestly about what may be causing you to have a negative effect on the people around you. Second, confess. Whatever choices that have led you to have a negative effect on others, talk to God about it. Invite him into your mess. 
Just like the woman at the dinner party, we can approach God with all of our mess and brokenness. He isn't surprised. He won't reject this. We can own it, apologize for it, and receive forgiveness for it. He accepts us just as we are. He sees us exactly as we are. People made in his image with incredible potential. You may wanna to talk to an adult about your past decisions as well. Not to shame you or embarrass you, but to help you identify where things went wrong and how to make it right. Moving from a negative effect to a positive effect may take some time as you rebuild trust with people around you who have maybe been hurt or affected by your wrong choices. Third, go in peace. You are forgiven because of who Jesus is and what he has done. Your past doesn't define your future. He sees you as you were meant to be. And even as you're rebuilding trust with others, know you have a clean slate with Jesus. And fourth, identify specific steps you can take to move in the right direction to rebuild trust after the negative effect you've had on people around you because of the choices you've made. Maybe it's apologizing to someone you have mistreated or lied to. Maybe it's changing the way you speak to people or asking for someone to hold you accountable. As you leave today, remember, because of Jesus, we can change the effect we have on others. Lost influence doesn't have to be lost forever. We have the ability to take a step in a different direction. As you head to small group, I want you to reflect on the choices you're making on a daily basis. Think about the way you treat others. Ask yourself, am I affecting the people around me in a positive or negative way? If the answer is negative, know that God loves you, forgives you, and validates you. And just like the woman who crashed in a party with Jesus, your story can change and your effects can too.